Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, this is uh, Construction Safety Week and Thursday, which is day four. And uh, today we'd like to give a short webinar on working at height. But before we go into the working at height, today is the first day of the level five restrictions for the company. And I'd just like to reiterate that we should make every effort that, where we can, where we're working at home or working in their normal places of work or their abnormal places of work that we should continue to use social distancing, um, use of masks and to wash our hands and to just do all we can to limit the spread of this virus so we can all get back to normal in our work and our uh, home lives. So that being said, I'd like to kind of go on to the, the uh, talk we were going to have today, which is the working safely at height. Okay, thanks. So working safely at height. So first is what do we mean when we, say what are working at height well working at height is working in any place including uh, above or below ground level <coughs> where a person could be injured <coughs> excuse me if they fall from that place and one thing that we shouldn't forget is that access and egress to that place of work can also be working at height and by that we mean access to that via ladders or uh, <coughs> such like so examples of work activities that we would classify as working at height are working on mobile elevated platforms mutes that might consist of scissor lifts or scaffolds, uh, working on a flat roof, erecting faults, um, work or farm work, working on a ladder, working on ground level adjacent to an excavation, working on a farm work within an excavation, and working near or adjacent to fragile material that could fall away and obviously create um, a height where previously one wouldn't have thought so. And even though we have referenced working at an, on a ladder, as I said previously, using a ladder to access these working at heights would also be considered uh, working at height. So falls um, present a very serious risk and there, there are still over a thousand fatalities and 4,000 accidents across Europe associated with falls every year. And in 2019, 12 people died results of accidents on Irish construction sites and 30 in the UK. And uh, I suppose the message is don't let a fall shatter your life. I have two sort of experiences myself where a colleague of mine a number of years ago was using a ladder and he fell from a height of only two feet and shattered his hip and was out of work for months. And as a person I worked or I, that I knew a number of years ago was painting his house at home, he fell and broke both of his legs and obviously was out of work for a considerable period of time. And I suppose falls, they're things that are, we don't immediately think of, but they can have pretty grave consequences. So we mentioned uh, working on platforms. So working on mobile platforms is something that we would do in various parts of our business very commonly. And uh, the fatalities and injuries associated with mobile platforms will be entrapment, where an operator is trapped between the basket itself and the fixed structure, where there might be overturning, where the machine may overturn during the work, um, falling, where an operator might actually fall from the basket itself. Um, a collision where, the, where the, they are mobile, so the vehicle may collide with pedestrians, overhead cables or nearby vehicles. And one of the elements of this where it's quite often forgotten about is objects falling from the heights that we're working on. So a worker in the vicinity of a plant may be hit by an object falling from our mobile platform. So how do we use uh, mobile platform safely? We should always select the right equipment. Um, and so we, fit the, uh, the mobile platform to the circumstance in which we're working. And once we select that, we have to ensure that it's operated by a, a certified trained operator. Um, once that's done, we should perform risk assessment and emit statement for the, for the work. And not only do we produce the risk assessment and emit the statement, it's very important that we follow those. Uh, before we start our work, we should perform pre-operational checks. We should use the correct PPE. And in this particular case is generally personal fall arrest systems. We should assess the position and the stability of the platform and we should never exceed the, the rated load. Before we use any of this equipment, we should obviously ensure that whatever maintenance, whether it's on the unit itself, the platform or the, the fall arrest systems, they're within date and the correct maintenance has been uh, performed on them. So another form of platform is the scaffolding. So we have a uh, diagram here, a photograph here of the various elements that are intrinsic to the safe operation of scaffolding. So it's a guardrail, midrail, 
tow board, planking, and sort of wire mesh where appropriate. Uh, and we obviously have a photograph there of where scaffolding, where it can go wrong, can have grave consequences. We should never use scaffolding with the scaffolding complete sign. And we should never use any scaffolding which is missing any guardrails or tow boards. Um, only authorized personnel should either alter or remove scaffolding. Um, we should never climb scaffolding, and that includes the scaffolders themselves. And we should never throw material or let material fall from the platform. What we should use is, or what we should do is we should tie off all ladders to scaffolding load the loading bay and not the actual work platform and report all defects to the foreman or our safety officer. With ladders, uh, we should always ensure that the ladders are, um, that have been, have been inspected and we should always face a ladder when we're ascending or descending from a ladder. We should always maintain three points of contact with the ladder. And by that we mean two feet in one hand or two hands in one foot. And uh, the top of the ladder should never be used as a step, we should never be, we should never move a ladder, um, shifted or be extended while it's in use, and we should never carry an object or a load that will cause you to lose your balance. Um, with ladders, we should never overreach, and we should always aim to keep our belt buckle between the styles and that um, keeping them both feet on the same rung. We shouldn't carry out work which might cause sideways loadings on the ladder. Uh, we should never work on the top three rungs of the ladder or the top two steps for staff ladders. We shouldn't straddle the A-frame of a ladder, move a ladder while it's standing, while we're standing on the rungs. We should never slide down the styles and we should, shouldn't extend the ladder while we're standing on the rungs. So <clears throat> fall protection. So there is a, we have a hierarchy for, for fall protection and the first level one will be to eliminate the hazard altogether so we should avoid a situation where we have to work at a height so if we can use systems or equipment that can eliminate the need first that's what we should do the second level which is physical barriers which uh, which by like guardrails we should protect um the unprotected edges the next level up is that we should use pp to restrain the movements of a worker so that's to stop the worker from accessing the point where a fall could occur. After that, then, where we can't avoid that, we will use PPE fall arrest equipment, where that would just be to stop the fall or control the fall of the worker with unacceptable force. And the last and least um, acceptable form is that where we can't use any of the previous system hierarchy as mentioned before, we have work practices or procedures to just elevate the create or the workers awareness but as i said that's the least the least um, recommended so first if we cannot eliminate the work then we have to um, go up through the stages so the second stage will be the passive fall protection such as guardrails or a netting system and that those systems are there we don't interact with them they come into play if a fall occurs um, the next level up will be the, the fall restraint whereby a worker is, work, is, her, is wearing um, a harness and a lanyard of a fixed length, which would stop the worker from accessing the point where a fall could occur. And the next level up then is the fall arrest system. And basically what that is, is we're using a harness and, and um, a shock absorbing lanyard, which in the event of a fall, will control the fall of the, of the employee and uh, prevent serious consequences of, of a full fall. Uh, what we need in this particular instance is we need an, an anchor point which has to be assessed so that it can take the forces associated with the worker falling. We need the PPE, which is the, the harness, and we need the correct lanyard, which is the shock absorbing lanyard. When we're using a fall arrest system, however, we're not eliminating, we're not eliminating all the risk. We're, we're controlling the fall of the, uh, the worker, but we're not eliminating the injury entirely. There is risk associated with the use of fall arrest equipment. And what this is, when a fall arrest equipment comes into play, you're basically suspending um, a worker in the air and that, can, and that has the potential to have oxygen deprivation to the brain. It can result in the drop of blood, to, uh, the return of blood back to the heart. The femoral veins are compressed and it can cause blood to pool in the victim's legs. So we mentioned earlier that the requirement for a risk assessment and a method statement, and that method statement should include 
for the recovery of that person once the fall arrest equipment has come into play. The lanyards, which are sort of an intrinsic part of the fall arrest equipment, they have to we have to use the, the correct the correct lanyard. Um, you should consult with the um, your safety officer when selecting the, the <coughs> excuse me the correct lanyard. But we always use locking screw, gate, carabiners, and ensure that both ends are locked. Falling objects, it's it's again it's the kind of forgotten cousin of the working at height. It, uh, quite apart quite apart from the, the people who are falling. Um, Obviously, objects can fall as well, and the consequences of a falling object um, can be life-threatening in, in the right or the wrong circumstances. <coughs> we should store what we can at ground level. We should ensure materials are, and work tools are secure. We should store whatever materials we need well back from the edges, and we should use tow boards, put linkers at edge of the storage area, or solid barriers to prevent um, items leaving the, the platform where, where we're working. So we should always remember to avoid working at height where, where possible. We should work at height. It should be planned, supervised, and safe. We should always prepare a written risk assessment. And more importantly, we should stick to that written risk assessment and method when we start the work. We should always use equipment that protects the most amount of uh, people, elective measures, we call it, or ladders, really, they were meant for work of a very short duration, if at all, and we should always maintain three points of contact. We should always consider weather conditions because working at height, not always, but frequently, you are subject to the um, weather conditions and wind is a big consideration. Work platforms, they must have top and intermediate handrails and tow boards. We should protect all the edges and the openings where a fall could occur. We should inspect the equipment used for work at the height, and we should train users for the use of that equipment. And we should, and as we mentioned earlier, especially with the um, the fall arrest equipment, we do need to have rescue and emergency plans in place to recover those people should the worst occur. So, in summary, can work at height be avoided? Uh, we hope so, but if not, then the risk has to be um, reduced and. It, if not, then we have to plan work at height to include safe access and egress, age protection for people and materials, PPE and suitable training as applicable. We must carry out a risk assessment and work to that risk assessment and all the work at height that require guardrails, intermediate guardrails and tow bars should be fitted or another appropriate control. And where these measures are impractical, we should fit guardrails, then personal suspension equipment or fall rest equipment must be utilized as required. So I think we're going to use um, a small animation that, that, that we have available. We're going to replay it here just to bring it home to everybody, if that's okay. Not taking the right precautions when working at height could put you, your colleagues, subcontractors, site visitors, or the general public at risk. Accidents can happen due to falling from a height, falling objects or equipment collapsing. Evaluate the work to be done. Can it be done from the ground? If you must work at height, then identify potential hazards and prepare yourself. So wear your safety helmet, footwear, gloves and most importantly your harness. Use approved and certified equipment only. Consider the weather conditions and the impact this may have on working safely at height. If debris is likely to be falling, then chutes, fans or full enclosures should be used. All work at height should be supervised and carried out by a competent person. Don't think you're simply using a ladder. Make sure someone is securing it at the base. No matter where you work in EPS, remember, think safe, work safe, be safe. And when it comes to working at height, it's not the falling that hurts, it's the landing. So listen, thanks for um, tuning in. Um, it's just, we want everybody during this construction week to just stop for a moment and think about what we're doing and what aspects of work could be, could involve a risk. And uh, today was working at height. I hope, I don't, I don't, I'm hoping none of this is new. We should all be, ju it just takes a moment to think and think back about what we're doing. And um, I suppose, 
work safely where we can <laughs> in a bit stuck. So um, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. And I'm hoping some things were brought back to mind that maybe we may have forgotten about. And um, thanks very much. <laughs>